What's going on guys and girls? Exciting news out of OpenAI today. They released their latest model called GPT-4 O. The O is for Omni, so that means GPT-4 O can now understand text, it can understand images, and it can also speak to you. So essentially, it is going to combine audio, vision, and text in real time. So you can speak to it um, like a human individual and it'll be able to reply to you very, very uh, quickly it's pretty insane how good it is if you want to check out some videos you can see the model um, videos that they've released on OpenAI. it's really really good it can do a lot of different things it's essentially having access to the world's most powerful ai uh, model but now you can actually uh it can actually read it can actually see things and it can reply to you like a human being so it's really really cool but in today's video i'm going to focus on how we can use it as online publishers to write content so GPT-4 O is also much faster than GPT-4 Turbo, and it's also half of the cost, so it costs less. And it also has a knowledge cutoff of, I believe, of October of 2023. It's more up-to-date compared to GPT-4 Turbo, and it um, also writes faster, and it is going to cost you a little bit less. And when you look at performance, GPT-4 O actually compares pretty comparable to Claude Opus. I really like Claude Opus and I think it's better than GPT-4 Turbo. So it'll be interesting to see how it will compare um, with Claude Opus. I will do probably a more in-depth comparison in another video. This video will just be going over, you know, how to access GPT-4 O and how to actually use it. And we'll be taking a look at the output quality. So first, the GPT-4 O is available in the API console. It's not going to be available for everyone. Um, I have it available. I'm not sure how many people else will have it available. But as you can see here, they've already added in GPT-4 O. So if you want to check, just head over to platform.openai.com. If you use the, plat pla uh, the playground mode before, this is what it will look like. It does look a little bit different. So they've changed around the interface, but it's actually much, much more easier to use. So first, I'm going to enter my system instructions. For this example, I'll be using my low AI and SEO prompts. So essentially, I'm going to copy over all of my prompts here. And if you want to use these prompts, it will be in the description below today's video. You can download it for completely free. And then I'm going to enter that within my system settings. Because I also want to test to see the AI score. I'll, I'll be interested to see if it's going to I'll be able to write content that is going to bypass AI detectors. So now that we have our system prompted, we're now going to go ahead and get our prompt for our outline. So I've pasted in my outline prompt and I've entered in my topic, which is how can I buy a home in Canada as a newcomer? And it's going to be very interesting to see if it's actually going to include more up-to-date information. So now we're ready to rock and roll. Just want to make sure our maximum tokens is higher and then we can leave temperature at around um, 0 0.6. That's fine. And then we can click run. And as you can see, that was really, really quick. It's pretty much finished writing. So I would say it has a speed of GPT-4 Turbo. So it's really, really fast. And this is a big difference between Opus. Opus is pretty slow. So this is much, much faster, which um, I really, really like compared to Opus because obviously you're just saving a little bit of time. So now that we have our prompts or our outline, we can, we're going to use our prompts for the full article. And I'm also going to tell it to include some links to see how um, Opus will, or sorry, how um, GPT-4 O will do when it comes to including live links within the actual articles. I'm also going to tell it to aim for 2000 words to see if it's going to follow those instructions a little bit better. We're going to increase our maximum length, and then we're going to go ahead and click run. Okay, so this is the content in which we get back. As you can see, it was really, really fast. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the word count. So in terms of words, this is about 1100 words, which is not bad, but of course we would probably like something a little bit longer. So it's not really listening to the instructions that we give it in terms of word count, but I can tell the content seems pretty good. And they've also went ahead and included some links. So let's go ahead and convert this quickly. How can I buy a home in Canada as a newcomer? Buying a home is a significant milestone, especially for newcomers. Da -da -da. understanding the Canadian housing market. And we have some actual links here, which I will click in a second to make sure that they work. And we have a conclusion. So it's a pretty decent article, but I would say it can be much, much more in-depth. Let's just quickly go ahead and pop this onto a Word document. And let me see if these links actually work. CREA.ca, okay, that works. That's awesome. Equifax, let's see if this works. Yep. 
looks like it works. Okay, so the links aren't broken, which is really, really good. That's a very good um, sign because sometimes you get some broken links when you're using um, any of these AI writers, especially if you're using GPT-4. So we're actually able to get some real links that will work. That is a really good sign. Uh, we also get some additional resources. So I like that, that that's available. Um, obviously, I think that this could be longer and a simple way to extend your articles, especially when you're writing um, using any AI writer is that we can simply tell it to keep the same tone, style and links, but expand the article. And then what I like to do is then change between GPT-4 or in this case, GPT-4 O, and then we can use GPT-3.5 Turbo 16K. And usually it does a really good job. I just want to make sure that it's actually keeping in those links because sometimes GPT 3.5 isn't the best with links, but it is actually keeping in the link, those links. So once you tell it to keep those links, usually it does a good job of doing so. And as you can see, the article is much, much longer, much more in-depth. Now, while that's writing, let's head over to originality.ai and we're going to test out the AI detection score. Unfortunately, in terms of AI detection, it is still 100% AI. So I would say that GPT 4.0 still does not pass AI detectors maybe we have to give it a much better prompt but for the time being it does not pass but that's okay because as i tell you guys ai detection isn't the most important thing especially when it comes to ranking i've ranked content that is 100 ai with having no issues you just want to make sure you're writing in-depth um, quality content so as you can see this is a much much longer article i think we went from maybe having 1100 words to probably now having this is probably going to be well over 3000 words so if you want to extend the article you can simply do so by using um by using the expanding function and that prompt will also be in the um, description below so again let's go ahead and do a quick word count so this is 2700 words and this is about 1600 so this is actually over 4000 words of content so that is really really long so yes that may be an overkill but as you can see it's pretty simple right for you to write really long in-depth articles i just want to make sure yes and they do actually keep the links in there as well but what it does is it expands on the um on the content that was created by gpt 4.0 so gpt 4.0 like gpt 4 did a really good job at setting up the article but when it comes to really adding some some depth to the articles and adding more content that's where i like using you know another model that's a little bit cheaper and faster but because we set up the article using gpt 4.0 the overall quality of the article is really, really good. So again, this is what the full article looks like. Very, very long, very in-depth, a lot of lists, very easy to read, very um, scannable and SEO optimized and also writing in a human style content. Let's do a quick word count. So over 4,200 words and we have some internal links there and it's up-to-date content. So, so this is the workflow in which I would use to write content with GPT-4.0. Oh, I will do some more testing on my own to really see the differences between GPT-4.0 oh and GPT-4 Turbo, but just from the surface level, I'm liking the content that I'm seeing. It does seem to be a little bit better than GPT-4 Turbo. It's more up-to-date, it is cheaper, and it's also faster. So I recommend you guys try it out and let me know what you think in the comments below. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, let it be known by giving us a big thumbs up and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And also before you go, we will be integrating GPT-4.0 into WordRocket very, very soon. So if you want to um, use GPT-4.0 in WordRocket, then you can check it out uh, in the description below today's video. You can try it for completely free using the OneShot Blockpost Generator, and you can add your own API key. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.